is going on, everybody? Mike Strauss back with another interview. This time I got to catch up with John Fitch. His name has been in the news a lot these last few days, but him and I actually had this conversation planned for about a week. So before we get to that, you guys know you can find my work at bjpen.com, Low Kick, Cage Side Press, and of course, my YouTube channel, Mike Strauss, Mike Mike, MMA. All right, back to my conversation with John Fitch. Enjoy. I want to welcome John Fitch back to the show. You know what, man? Your name has been brought up a lot lately. We had this plan beforehand, so it wasn't like, you know, jumping on, on, on the train here. But first off, man, how you been? I've been good. Uh, you know, training's been good. Good training camp, ready for this weekend. Way is coming down nicely. Um, just getting some rest in right now in between stuff. I saw you on uh, Luke Thomas earlier this morning. You, you look good. You look like everything is going good. So, you know, that's always uh, that's always good. You know, the first thing that I want to ask you about, man, obviously, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but is the GSP fight probably the biggest fight of your life? But is this the second biggest? I mean, uh, they're all big, <laughs> honestly. Uh, I mean, I guess in terms of uh, size and scope and people seeing it, it was it was probably the biggest. Um but this is a this is a much, this is a very big fight also. Um, uh, it's different, but it's also it's also big. I'm just happy to be in this position and uh, you know excited to get the opportunity to fight for another title. What do you think of the welterweight Grand Prix so far? How do you think it's gone? They're really good, really successful. I think people dig it. Um, the fights have been good. I think they've been interesting. Uh, you know, I think the crowd and the, and the, and the people fans have been reacting really well with well, well to it. I like the meritocracy of it. I like 50 Cent getting involved and throwing money out for it. I like the title being up uh, for grabs. Um, it's just a it's just a good uh, good event. Yeah, no, it definitely is, man. It's it's gone very well. So much so now that you're seeing them, uh, they're going to do a featherweight one, and I think that's a a very good move too because Bellator's featherweight class is super deep too. So you know that's a whole other thing. But going back to this fight, man, uh, you know Rory McDonald, he's the champion. You got a crack at him here. What are you expecting from him? Uh, you know, I I always focus on me. I, I I know he's tough. I know he he's got good stand up, decent wrestling, decent ground. Um, but I don't I don't sit around and wait and think about all the things my opponent's going to be doing or trying to be doing. I, I'm more concerned about getting my game plan initiated and forcing my will upon him. Yes, yes, you always have been that guy. So uh, let me ask you, man. I, I read on I think it was on your page or your blog about the. Um the uh, nootropics that you, you were kind of like grading out, like how, how they did for yeah. you and everything. And I want to ask you personally, because I've done, I've done Alpha Brain and then I did another one. I can't remember what the name of the second one that I did. But mm -hmm. I, I think, I don't know if it was placebo, but I definitely felt like, I felt like I was able to formulate sentences better and, and things like that. There, there is something to it, isn't there? Uh, I, I think so. Definitely the ones I used, the, the Gorilla uh, Mind Rush ones I used. Um, the, uh, I tried the Alpha Brain. I didn't. I didn't feel anything from it. I didn't notice anything from it. Uh, so you know, I, I was a little bit skeptical of Nootropics for a little bit. But then I, I found this other company, and uh, they've got a couple different daytime Nootropics, and then one to take at night. And I'm um, I'm a pretty big fan. The uh, the the dream, the Gorilla Dream that they have. Uh, you know, I get really vivid, really vivid dreams uh, when I take those. Um, and the Mind Rush is like a kind of like a a pre-workout without the cracky feeling, without the crash, mm. uh, and then the uh, the smooth is um, it's a mood mood like elevating thing. Kind of just puts you in a good mood, and and there's definitely something to it. Uh, I enjoy them. I I was using them to help when I was writing my book. Uh, it helped me with focus, and I could just kind of sit there for a few hours and just do nothing but work and write. Yeah, I definitely think there's something to it too, and I definitely think that I'm going to take some of your uh, suggestions there. I th I think. Uh, one of the ones that I was reading was the NALT. Does that sound right? The oh, that one too. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I'll take that. I usually take that uh, in the morning. I have that recommended to me from my uh, uh, my guy that's helped me out with my with my neck, and he got me up on all the all the supplements. And that was uh, one of the big ones that uh, he had me start taking in the mornings. Yeah, definitely gonna have to check that out. Do you, do you smoke marijuana? Uh, not this close to fight time, but I do. I am a cannabis user. Um, I even make these, uh, I have a, I have an Etsy. I make these stone toke stone sculptures. Oh, that's so cool. Um, that, that you can use with your, with your joint, your pre-roll, whatever. So, uh, that's something that I, I do, uh, here and there. Um, when I was a little bit younger, I kind of did a lot more. Uh, but nowadays, you know, I, uh, I like to stay a little bit more focused. <laughs> so I'll, I've been saving it, you know, for nights, nighttime for bed and weekends. 
Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I'm a heavy cannabis user, so I, I believe yeah. there's something to that as well. But yeah, I hear you. Uh, you hear that a lot too, with fighters too that are that are cannabis users that they try to cut it out towards fight time, which you know that I, there's yeah. that totally makes sense, I guess, right? I mean, I mean, on on two ways, it just uh, helps. I think just just with focus, you want to be focused on your fight. You don't want to be. I don't want to be too relaxed. I don't want to be too uh, peaceful. I want to be on the edge a little bit. Right. <laughs> And then, and then there's the uh, the psychological aspect of it. You know, like I made sacrifices, I gave things up. Um, you know, I think that that plays a part in in you having confidence going into the fight. So I think that's important. But yeah. you know, I think anybody younger people uh, who are using, I think you, you make sure you get your your crap done. You know, things like cannabis are celebratory. You should be using them because uh, you're accomplishing things and getting ahead, not not using it to get in the way of doing stuff. And then, you know, I've uh, I've gotten control over the the pain in my neck that I've had for years. And uh, part of my cannabis use was was to deal with the neck pain because it was it was pretty bad for a while. I was getting a lot of stingers. Hands are going numb. And, uh, you know, getting my neck kind of taken care of is, is kept me from having to use as much. Uh, and that's, uh, of course, that's so much better than the alternative, which would be, you know, prescription yes. pain pills. So that's just. Yeah, I I had a friend who passed away, you know, like 2005, whatever. He OD'd, you know, it was right before the, <sighs> the you know, the wave of, you know, epidemic of, of, of uh, pills started killing people off. Yeah, it's terrible, man. I'm sorry for your loss. Mm. Yeah, he, was a, he was a good fighter, too. I think we, we missed out. We all missed out. Man. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I, I live uh, we're in Illinois, Chicago, and it's fucking, dude. It's just dev. It's not so much the pills, but the heroin. You know, it's just fucking. Uh, yeah, because once you, well, that that was one of the problems is they, all these people got hooked on pills, and then the government came through and started regulating the pills more heavily, and then everybody started turning to the the street heroin. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's exactly it. And then you know, then it becomes like a a wild west of you know what are you getting not like not like heroin that were safe but you you know what i mean you know yeah yeah it wasn't like the pill who was actually regulated and, and weighed and you knew exactly what it was it started just like you know just whatever is in there <laughs> grab bag of opiate drug yeah it's, man it's fucked up man uh so i i saw you respond to uh faraz's comments man and I, I don't want, you know, obviously you don't have to get too too much into it, but, it, you know, it seems like you you, you kind of said on the, the Luke Thomas show, you kind of said that it feels like, uh, or you didn't, I don't know if you, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you suggested that possibly it sounds like he's making an excuse even beforehand. And I have to agree with you. That's what it sounds like, Ben. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It just seems uh, weird to bring up now. It's not a, you know, it was 2014. <laughs> right. Uh, a, lot of, a lot has changed. I've gone through a lot. Uh, and I, and I, you know, I mean, I've been pretty open on my, my shake breaks, my live streams uh, with things. So for me, you know, I kind of vented through and, and, and explained a lot of things to a lot of people, answered a lot of questions over the, over the year, year and a half I've been doing that. So uh, it feels like old news to me. It feels like so long ago. And uh, I've, I've kind of cleaned up so much of my life, uh, you know, outside of fighting. You know, I've had, had so much stuff go on personally that uh, it seems like a million years ago. And, and to that effect, man, you're, you're one of the most transparent dudes out there. You know, I mean, you're not on bullshit. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't know any other way to put it. It's, I'm too lazy to. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I hear I'm you. too lazy to lie. I'm There's a lot to hard. that. It's hard too, work, lying. It's too much work. I'm not going to do that. Like, yeah, I remember everybody, what story you told and what you did where. I just, <laughs> I don't care, man. And then and then I started, like, with, with my book, like, I'm sharing old journal entries. I'm sharing my journals. So... Like, there's no covering that up. You're just, you know, you're going to see all the pimples and the gross stuff that I did. So, um, it's not going to be all redacted. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, yeah. I like mean, a, there's, like a there's, government uh, document, all redacted. I've changed, I've changed some names, <laughs> some people, you know. Right, but right. For the most part, like, it's, it's all in there. It's all stuff that I thought and uh, felt about situations. It's super so cool. It's, I think it's just a better way. I mean, whatever. You lived your life, you experienced it. Why, why be afraid of it? You know, you, your past doesn't define you. You got to be able to look at your past and grow from it, learn from it. If if you're not, like, what are you doing? Like, you're you're not really living if you're not growing. I couldn't agree with you anymore, man. But, I, I, you know, I, the thing is, like, how did you have the presence of mind to, like, to narrate that as you were going? You know what I mean? How, how did you know to do that? Well, I, I kind of explain in the book is, like, in 2000, 
I had a really bad season. Like I went eight and 31, I think was my record. And, uh, I was at a big 10 school and I wrestled a lot of top guys, but still, that was awful. I'm used to like dominating and winning. And then, uh, I had that awful year and I just kind of got a little bit depressed. And then the coach, you know, I was like, I'm not gonna let that happen again. I'm going to rededicate myself. Cause I, I partied hard that summer before. And, uh, I didn't really prep for the next year. And I think that was a big reason why I didn't, I didn't succeed that year. So a coach gave me, uh, gave us all these little, these journals to, to, to write down our workouts. It was a workout journal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they suggest that this is a great way to keep yourself accountable. And that was what I needed. I needed accountability because I didn't have anybody over my, over my shoulder telling me what to do. You know, I was a walk on. So the coaches, they weren't really worried about me. They didn't spend any money on me. So they weren't, they weren't, you know, like calling me every day. Cause some guys, you know, they, they call every day and they, they're trying to get them up in the morning to go workouts and runs and do other stuff. Like I, I didn't have that cause I was just an extra body cause I was a walk on. That's interesting right there. Yeah. So, you know, I used that journal to recommit myself and keep myself accountable, writing in my weight, writing in my workouts, what I did, you know, call myself a bitch because I missed <laughs> a workout or missed a lift or I didn't, I didn't finish a set or whatever, just being on myself. And I noticed that, I mean, it, it really helped that summer was a really great summer about recommitment and kind of going into monk mode and, and getting ahead. And I had, I turned things around. I started having, you know, a better season the next year. Uh, I put the, I put the uh, journal away, I think, because I, I created good habits and I kept on them. And then when I, I was in grad school, I, I finished my first year of grad school as a grad assistant with the wrestling team I had been fighting. I found the journal again. And I was like, man, you know, this, uh, this helped me last time. I should probably start using this again to help with this process. Cause I was getting ready to move to California. I was like, this, this could be cool. This could be a good thing to write these things down and keep track of what I'm doing. So, you know, I kind of obsessively started keeping track of this journal and, 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 and writing in it. And then I just kept buying new ones and, and putting more and more in. And I think, uh, there was a point where I was like writing in a page or more every night before going to bed, you know, training camps and stuff like that. I, there's, there's a lot of writing there, uh, over the years. Wow. You know, that's so cool, man. You, you said a lot there, too, like uh, like accountability. To, dude, dude, we all need that, right? I mean, shit, that's that's so important. I mean, goal, set, goal setting, accountability, like, you know, I said in the book, like, there's, there's, there's something about having to report to yourself at the end of the day. You know, you got to tell yourself, you got to report, you got to tell the pages how your day went, what you did in that day. And uh, there was a time, you know, that I, I wasn't writing in my journal, like, few years ago and uh it was because i didn't want to i didn't want to report to myself because I, I wasn't proud of the things i was doing i was having tough tough personal time and i, I didn't want to write in the book anymore because you know it was it's glaring back at you and it's mm -hmm. yelling at you uh more so than like your parents probably would it's very intimate right when you're writing something down more so than typing right i i, I think so I mean, for me because i never really typed in a computer that much you know mm -hmm. Uh, younger generations may find it easier to write journals in their phone or whatever, but like my generation, like I had to have, uh, you know, it was probably like the second nine weeks of uh, my freshman year of college. I had to have my English teacher told me like demand that I start typing my papers out. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I was I was handwriting. I would handwrite my my papers, and then we had to exchange with fellow students to help grade and proofread stuff. And the other kids were complaining because my writing was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too, bro. Mine too. I fucking terrible. You, you so know. I was like, damn. So I had to like learn how to. I had to learn how to use a computer. And like, it, it, it's comical now because it's like, yeah, you know, my kids are in you know, PK and and first grade, and they're already learning how to type. <laughs> Dude, it's it's insane. Man, I'm like, we come from the same gender. I'm I'll be 30, 39 in August, so we're, we're in that same yeah. area. And I just bought a new. Uh, I just bought a new notebook yesterday. Just came, just arrived from Amazon. Yep. So, dude, I still, I fucking, you know, I still do that. I still, it's very personal. I, to there's me. something therapeutic about it. I like it. I, I still have my, I have another uh, journal that I'm keeping. I, I don't write an off of it as much, but, I, you know, every, every few weeks I'll try to update and put something in there. But, um, yeah, it's just good to keep track of things and, uh, you know, talk to yourself a little bit. Yeah. No, it definitely is, man. And, uh, 
it's something that I didn't have like, um, you know, when I was younger, it's something I definitely picked up when I was older, but it seems like, you know, you kind of, you, you had that, then it, you kind of went away cause you didn't need it. And then when you needed it, you found it again. So that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. It kind of, it kind of, it kind of found me. I don't know uh, what it was, but you know, I just was going through stuff and getting stuff packed up and putting stuff away. And I was like, Hey, what do you know? There's still pages left in this book. Maybe I should, maybe I should start writing it again. Yeah, and then the floodgates open, right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I started to realize um, how beneficial it was because at first it was mostly just a workout journal. I didn't put too much extra stuff into it, but then I started putting all of my life into it and uh, all the other things that were going on. And, you know, it, it's helped me a lot, uh, you know, going back through it and reading through it. You know, writing that book was, was kind of like therapy. You know, it helped bring me back to a place where fighting was just an adventure and it was just fun it wasn't a job it wasn't you know feeding my family it was just a really cool thing that i got to do and most people didn't get to do it was me living out a, a video game or a, a, a an action movie that i enjoyed from my kid my childhood you know so uh yeah traveling the world visiting the locals and then fighting them <laughs> <laughs> man that's super cool man well uh this was fun dude i want to give you a uh, time here to you know, shout out your sponsors, coaches, whatever you man, whatever you want. Floor is yours. Uh, man, yeah. So people can check out uh, John underscore Fitch underscore Smash. That's my it's my Instagram. JohnFitch.net is my website. I got blogs and stuff up there. I got a Patreon, patreon.com backslash John Fitch. You can uh, see, uh, you know, I got lifting videos. I got uh, technique videos on my second my second tier. Um, yeah, I've just got a lot of stuff available. I've got blogs. I got my official John Fitch YouTube page, website, or not website, but a channel. Uh, and I do shake breaks pretty much every day during the week. Uh, at 9.30, I go live and talk to people, interact with people, uh, try to help people out, give them motivation for, the, for their life and getting this shit together, um, telling them things that I wish I would have had somebody tell me years ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, just, just looking back, knowing, knowing what I've learned and if I would have known a lot of this stuff. When I was in my 20s, things things would have been a lot better. You know, a lot of a lot of wasted time playing video games. And I could have been learning how to run businesses, especially online stuff. You know, there's a lot of money to be made online. Yeah, man. And then my my book, Failing Upward: Death by Ego, is available on Amazon. I search for my name or by my 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 name, John Fitch. Uh, a lot of things going on, so you know, plenty to uh, check out. Well, man, uh, as I said, this was really fun. I appreciate it. Uh, I wish you the best of luck in your uh, championship, your championship effort uh, this weekend, man. Bellator 220. Uh, sincerely, man, best of luck. I won't be there. I'm a Midwest dude, but uh, I'll be pulling for you, brother. Hey, dude. Good talking to you, Mike. Take care, man.